Peace, 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 IG. This is Brother Daniel, KC1NCF, tapping back in with you. And it is that time, family. It is 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as promised, we are going to go live with Samad Gardens Initiative. And we are going to talk about indoor growing, seeds, soil, and light. Seeds, soil, and light. And so um, right now, what I'm going to do is actually share this live out and, and, and um, get some people in here. And as you come in, make sure you tag at least three people, tag at least three people that you know will benefit from this conversation about this most important topic. I mean, with everything that's going on in the world and this pandemic and in general, the awakening of the masses to the reality that you know, health and well, wellness is your wealth. And the quickest way to um, attain to good health and to maintain good health is through the fork, through the spoon, through the plate, right? Meaning what it is that you eat, what is it that you are um, inviting into your body? What are you consuming, right? And then after you get past that, the question is, where is it sourced, right? So you have the option to buy food from a grocery store, you could buy food from food from a wholesale market. You could buy food from a restaurant, but then there's also that you know the oldest option, which is to grow your food. And so we're going to be speaking with um, Sarah Rose and Blessings Divine of Samad Gardens Initiative about everything dealing with farming. Everything, well, not everything, but we're going to get into it because you're going to have to tap them with them to get everything right. Peace, peace. We got Creamy Jones in the building. We got Monique. Shift your mind. Shift your life in the building. Um, T.Y. King is in the building. I am Marissa Black is in the building. Thank you all for joining. And our special guests are in the building. Um, and so I'm going to bring them on. I'm going to say a little bit about them and then I'm going to let them introduce themselves and we're going to get into this conversation. Please, please, please make sure you um, share this out to a few people. You can either share them directly in the DM or you can actually tag them in the comment section. Get your questions ready. Get your pins and your pads ready, because we're about to go in family. Uh, let me bring them on. This is exciting, fam. I'm, I'm really excited. This is actually going to be the first like real, real interview, um, at least on this page. And so yeah, I'm definitely really excited about that. All right, here we go. It's popped up now. Ah, uh, man, this is awesome. This is going to be awesome. Sister Laura Faye, thank you for chiming in. We got Desalines in the building. There we go. Peace, family. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Well, alaikum sir. Salam, sir. Peace. How are you doing today? Doing great. Yeah, really All right. excited about this conversation. This is like yes, something. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So real quick. Um, again, family, my name is Brother Daniel Casey, one NCF. And this is Radio Communications Survival Preparedness. And we are interviewing today a beautiful power couple here, um, Brother Blessings Divine and Sister Sarah Rose. And we're going to be talking about indoor, outdoor growing, seeds, soil, and light. All right. And so, again, you see, I see more people chiming in. We got Sister Colette is in the building, your sister by nature of Canada Colette. This is also an awesome sister. We're going to have her on and soon as well. Right, but real quick, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to read a little bit about Samad Gardens Initiative and our brother and our sister. So Samad Gardens Initiative is an urban garden education enterprise that offers virtual courses and produce to our communities in the inner city. Our goal is to raise a new generation of urban gardeners who grow their own food using our resources and the resources available to them from growing food for to foraging, seed saving, to soil amendments. Samad is the front lines of our communities. Sarah Rose. Sarah Rose is an urban homesteader and farmer in Hartford, Connecticut. With a passion for food justice, she draws from over five years of organic vegetable farming experience in, at Holcomb Farms and two years of urban farming experience in Hartford. She supports the blossoming urban gardening community through sharing her knowledge of seed saving, container gardening, and regenerative principles, food preservation, and more. Blessings is the mindset coach of Samad Gardens Initiative, well-versed in psychology, Black history, and scripture. 
He speaks to the day-to-day -day realities that the black men and women face in reclaiming the knowledge, skills, and resources needed to become independent through cultivating the earth. Blessings helps human beings grow. I love that. I love that bio. I love that about me. It's, it's really beautiful. It encapsulates everything we're going to talk about here today. So family, again, again, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. This is our, our beautiful brother and sister that we said we was going to have on, and they've graced us, our platform, to help inform us about what we can do. And, and y'all hear me say this on, on a promotion. You know, it doesn't matter if you have a big house with a, with a uh, nice little backyard in it, if you have access to a community garden, or maybe you don't have any, like, land space. If you just want to do something indoors because that's what's available to you, they have an answer for you. And so real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them to introduce themselves um, and just, you know, bless the audience with, 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 our, with their presence. Go ahead, brother. Um, brother, blessings. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, so my name is Blessings. I'm one half of Samad Guards Initiative. I am, as you wonderfully said, the mindset coach of Samad Guards Initiative. Um, I'm also an MC who makes beats and kicks rhymes. <laughs> and oh, thank you, Sister Colette. That's so that's so kind of you to say. <laughs> oh yeah, that's peace. Yeah, thank you, Sister Colette. And yeah, um, we are a married couple. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So my name's Sarah Rose. Um, I'm a farmer, plant addict, uh, seed starter, seed fanatic. I like that. Uh, <laughs> she's not lying. She's not lying. There's plants behind the right in the world. Yeah. So I, yeah, I started farming uh, five years ago. I, I actually got my start working in a um, nutritional supplement store. And then the more I was learning about, you know, vitamins, minerals, supplements, the more it all pointed back to, okay, well, where is the actual source? of all of you know our health and our nutrition and it and it was it was the soil you know it was the right. produce, that fresh food that's grown in a wholesome way that's clean that's pure you know what i mean that really is the foundation so it just got me thinking and um i ended up getting a summer farm job um just thinking oh it would just be you know a summer because we have this impression right in our minds that farming is like well, actually, well, not not um, not in the nation. Thank you know, thank a lot for that. But the mainstream concept of farmers is that oh, they're like that's just that's just a temporary job. That's not noble. That's not a dignified op occupation, right? Right. Or poverty. And so and yeah, and that. that was you know my mistaken mindset at the time. I was like, oh, I'll get a summer job, and I started farming, and I just loved it. I loved it. And it was so interesting because seeing the reception of, um, you know, when I told people I was, you know, a farmer, I was farming and they're like, oh, OK, like, <laughs> oh, like until you find something better to do. It was like, no, no, no this, this, this is, is it is to do. <laughs> this is it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Right. And so um, that's a very good point that you make that a lot of people you know, have that, and, and it's not their fault because of the way society has gone and the way they've made food seemingly convenient to us and so we a lot of us look at farming as maybe something that you know you might do like i said is a, a summer thing you might just go on the farm to volunteer something like that but no it's really a profession but not only that it's the first profession yes sir. it's literally the first work right and so can you tell me a little bit about that um it, for, from your perspective of, of it being the first work and really the most important work, because when you think about farming and agriculture, um, every other industry is derived from that. If you are into making clothes, well, your clothes come from the earth. If you're into, you know, engineering or any of that stuff, all of that stuff comes from the earth. Now, you, you all do farming as far as food is concerned, but really farming is more than just food. So um, what do we have to say about that and, and it being the first work? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, I, I actually, I, I love the comment um, by by Majestic Gage. Farmers are actually the richest of all of us. That has right. ended up being my mindset shift to where the point where like knowing what's coming, what's what's ahead of us and knowing that, you know, food is a basic need. Right. And where mm -hmm. are we going to, you know, get our food and get, get the food to the people once you're not necessarily able to get it from the grocery store. So I've always had that, I felt a like responsibility, right? As a farmer, we need to figure out ways to, to feed, you know, to feed our people, right? right. Um, yeah, and, and, it just, and it just being the first occupation, it's like, 
I feel more myself. I feel more connected, more grounded when I'm out in the fields or working the soil. Um, it really does feel like a vehicle of connection to God. And I, and I think part of that is because, you know, um, because he, Allah gave us the, as human beings, you know, the responsibility for, for, um, for, for sowing seeds, for farming, for like stewarding and taking care of the earth. And so exactly. we, have, we have an essential part in that. And it really does feel like just getting back to the very basics of what being human means, you know, um, and be, and, and yeah, and, and getting in touch with also with, with your God power. Like you're literally, you're literally planting seeds and then, you know, making something grow, you know what I mean? Where, 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 uh, yeah, where, where it wouldn't necessarily grow without your intervention in that way. So it's like a lot gave us a role and it feels like we're playing that role when we when we're growing seeds and and planting. That's my indeed. Yeah. Um, as for myself, there's a lot with that because uh, not only was that the first job that God gave man, you know what I'm saying, but wrapped up in that lies every single thing for our for our own spiritual, psychological growth and development. You know what I'm saying? Because we're right. given this exact mirror reflection of how our minds work and how our spirit oh, works. It's you know? long. And everything that we do, you know what I'm saying, has a has the ability to grow, just like it does with plants. You know what I'm saying? So like the most important seed I tell people, it's not your cabbage seed, it's not no, the most important seed is your seed of thought. Mm -hmm. And it works literally the exact same way. So it's great to have a like a direct mm -hmm. replica to tell people understand, like, no, this is how your thought works. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, when you start, you have to you have to learn things like faith. Well, let's despookify the language. Faith doesn't mean, you know. Faith isn't a religious term or nothing like that. It's a mathematical right. scientific term. Faith just simply demands mm -hmm. your belief in something that you cannot see. That's right. If you put a seed in some dirt, you don't know what's happening. You have no idea. You water it. You do the best you can for it. But there's something that goes beyond your physical sight that you have no right. idea is going to on. And eventually, just, you know, faith means I know something's going to happen. It's going to come up. And eventually, poof, it was a little shoot. And it starts That's growing. Right. So, That's like, right. every, every aspect of our development as human beings can be summed up and the holy yeah, and so, and so you know you say that and i and i and my mind went to the triple darkness right and how could we tie that into a triple darkness well you take a seed something that is not really defined you know it's a seed mm -hmm. many seeds are similar to other seeds you know unless you are someone who actually farms you've dealt with a bunch of seeds and then you know the little intricacies and, and um the nuances between them then you're just looking at seeds some things are more obvious than others right now inside of that shell there's a darkness that that plant is living in that's that that organism living in and then you place it in the ground and it's and, and it's and it's being shielded from the actual light but then the soil is actually dark as well right so there's a triple darkness there right but you talked about accessing your god powers and so when you take something and you put it in the triple darkness something that is not have defined what does it say um you know the the earth was without form and void and then you take it and you nourish it stage after stage until it does what germinate and then you can see something coming up out of that triple darkness now you could take something like a mustard seed this tiny little thing and then it produces this gigantic tree and so you're exercising what the powers of creation and, and and that really is a beautiful thing when we think about it right and so since we're there you know that's the first thing that we want to talk about seeds right and so we talked a little bit about you know you all and, and well i have one more one more question and then we'll get into the seeds the soil yeah. and the light so i've read a little bit about you all but what was it that actually led you to farming if, if y'all don't mind covering that each. Okay. What was it that, that, that made you say, okay, let me go try this or, or this is what I want to do? Yeah, so I, I would highly encourage everybody who hasn't um, tasted like a locally grown produce to just taste it. Locally grown organic produce. Because that, right. that was the light bulb for me is... I wasn't brought up with that mentality that, you know, of really valuing like local fresh produce, like from, right. from a farm. I, I really honestly never had, <clears throat> never had that until I was probably 21, 21 years mm -hmm. old. 
Wow. And I had, you know, a fresh cucumber from, from the farm. And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> what a cucumber tastes like? like wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was just like, wow, it just like blew my mind. And then I, um, I was at, at the, that store I was, I was talking about that I used to work at, the nutritional supplement store. That was a drop-off spot for our local farm CSA. And CSA just stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So basically people would, um, so the farm would drop off produce at our store and then people would pick it up from the store. Um, and so we got to then have access to that produce. And I, I was, you know, tasting that, that produce all during that, that, um, that year that I worked in the store. And it was like blowing my mind, the taste, mm -hmm. the flavor. And I was like, I never had that kind of relationship with vegetables before. Um, yeah, so that really is what inspired me to, um, to take a farming job. And yeah, it just the rest is history, just being outside every day and like, and working as a part of a team, because um, you, you're really you're working hard, you're working your body, you're working your mind, like a lot of people don't realize how intelligent you have to be to be a farmer, like there's that kind of right. stereotype of you just you're just kind of a laborer. Um, but there's there's so much planning, there's so much problem solving, like, you know, on the spot problem solving involved and um, a lot. And but yeah, just being outside, it just yeah, it just totally it just appealed to me. I felt like um so much more alive as really as part of nature, as part of um part of the environment, you know. So yeah. Right. I like that. I like that. This is why I call her the heart of the team because she she gets so excited and so passionate. She just makes everyone else like, wow, I have to try that too. You know what I mean? Your boy That's what makes it. This food from Taco Bell, yo, this Taco Bell thing is killing you. You got to try this. And we get excited to try it. But this is the real, this is, we call that taco hell. This is the real food over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. And, and shout out to Brother Nuri for that one. I saw that. I ain't going to lie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, as for myself, um, she was actually the first one who had me at the at the farm. And I will never forget um, being there and harvesting tomatoes. And like, and she was, I either heard somebody else like, yo, try this tomato. I'm like, I don't like tomatoes, dude. Chill, man. What is fun? Like, also, just try it. I'm like, fine. Oh my God. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> different. One of my favorite fruits. Yeah. It's tomatoes, it, was like a, it was like a Snickers commercial. It was like, yo, man, calm down. You get Snickers. See what I mean? You get your tomatoes. Right. That's what I felt like. <laughs> yeah. It was just it was cool because, like, not only was she, she the one who gave me the access to it, but me, myself, I've always been, like, into nature and in and, and the science. I'm most of my zoologist growing up because I, I love studying animals, stuff like that. I was my interest kind of old. So she was the one who got me first working the farm. And then they were all excited because, you know, it was it is a very white area. Right, and I and it was I was a sense of something different, like oh snap, he's a black dude. Oh, he can do a head spin. Oh, he raps. That's so cool. <laughs> hey, we're doing a show here. Like you know, you should you should you should rap and do to break dance and stuff. My like, bet, and and from there that it just kind of tied itself together, and I started learning and learning and applying and stuff like that. And then she started really teaching me. She was my best teacher, and I'm proud to be her best student. <laughs> and that's how we kind of got here today. We do a lot, yes, sir. <laughs> I will just add, so there was like, um, there was stepping onto the farm, right, which is in the the rural environment. But yeah, as, as Blessing just said, it was a very white area. And I started, you know, realizing like, why are all the resources, you know, all the fresh food resources, they're in these white areas, you know, all, all the CSA members, right, they're all these like wealthy white families. And, you know, I, I knew from the jump that, that that wasn't the community that I wanted to be supporting, and that wasn't obviously there you know there's something wrong with that picture um so it was always my intention to how do i bring that you know how do i absorb this knowledge right and then bring it back to the city bring it back to you know folks of color who need this knowledge but don't want to enter like you know enter a white space and be judged and you know ha have all of these issues right to yeah, get that, that knowledge yeah, I know that so yeah so that, that that's that's the real thing so um so that was the inspiration is to be like in the city, to be part of the city, to be like in touch with the people, um, to give them both like both a touch of the farm experience, but also just community gardening, like indoor gardening, container gardening, just making it work, meeting the people where they're at. That's been like a really important 
uh, goal. And that's, that was kind of the reason why we started Cement Gardens Initiative, right? And I, so I no longer work at that farm. I, I got the knowledge, but now I'm 100% dedicated to our people, the people who, who need it and yeah, could benefit from it. And who are like investing and ready to go and want to learn th these skills um, but just haven't been kind of have been barred from the opportunity for, for learning. That's a classic one, two, three. She got the knowledge. Now she applying it, which is which is the understanding. We about to, which is the wisdom. Wow. Which brings forth the understanding. I don't know how I messed that up. <laughs> That's right. No, I got that. I got that. But I want to go back real quick because y'all both said like basically the same thing as far as you had the cucumber, right? And it's like you eating what you thought was a cucumber, right? But then right, you right. taste the real one. It's like, wow. And then you talk about tomato. Now, I had the same um, experience. Well, I, I've always liked tomatoes. I've never really, like, eaten them raw, like, just the tomato by itself. But I, except, like, for tomato soup, I used to eat that a lot when I was younger. But I remember the first time I had a tomato, like, directly off the vine. And that was amazing. What type of – so I, for me, it was – um. It's either grape or a cherry tomato. I don't remember which one, but it was sweet. It was, it tastes like a fruit. And, and I just remember that experience. And that is one of the first things that draws you in when you have uh, your first taste of something that is organic directly from the earth. Like that, that's dope. What was your, what was the type of tomato you had real quick? I don't even know. It was, it was one of those small gold ones. There's a different variety. There's yeah, like orange ones. See, that's, that's the other thing. We think tomato, we just think, oh, red tomatoes, right? What other right. kind of are there? There's like sunset, like starburst, you know, like colored yeah. tomatoes. And there's like over 20 varieties at the, at the farm yeah. at that time, so I don't remember which one was which. He liked, um, it was a small little orange variety. So it was either cherry or grape tomato. Same, same for me, yeah, let yeah. The, let the record show, I still don't like cucumbers. <laughs> that's okay. I love also, cucumbers, I love them both. Yeah, scripture also also paints heaven mm. as this picture as a place where mm. of gardens where rivers flow. We can yeah. eat onions and cucumbers and, and all that type of stuff. So I'll skip the cucumbers. I'll take anything else. You know what I mean? Exactly. So real quick, family. Again, y'all see the pin at the bottom, www.samadgardensinitiative.com. Make sure y'all go and check out that website. Um, also, y'all see the name um, there, there, of their um, IG. Uh, make sure y'all check out their page, like their page and stuff. Also, make sure you're sharing this live out to some people you think will benefit from it because we're about to really get into the into the uh, meat of this thing and go down um, that line. Seeds. Let's talk about seeds, family. So okay. keep in mind, keep in mind, everyone. Oh, look at that. See, she got them all organized and stuff. Yeah, so, so, so keep in mind, family, I'm not going to let them give you all the game. Because we're going to talk about a little bit later, you know, the opportunity that they have for you to learn about indoor outdoor gardening um, and, and, and to get involved with it, regardless to your situation and circumstances. So let's talk about seeds, family. Um, when we're dealing with seeds, you know, there's a reality that some things, the seed comes from the fruit. There are seeds that is it's like it's the fruit itself. And then there are... Um, Fruits that it's not necessarily seed, but you might replant the actual plant, right? Let's talk about seeds a little bit. So to yeah. someone who doesn't know much about farming or gardening, what is the most important thing that they should know about seeds in, in, in the seeding process? Give us some game on that. Yeah, so I think, um, I think first of all, uh, just making the connection that when you have a plant, you have a seed. So just make, looking for, okay, well, what form is this seed going to take, right? So, so if I have a tomato plant, right, um, the seeds are going to be inside the tomatoes, right? And so that, that's two major categories of seeds. You have dry seeds and you have wet seeds. So wet seeds would be like that, like a tomato, um, what's another example, like cucumbers, right? Anything right. where it's moist on the inside and you've got your seeds on the inside. Um, dry seeds would be, some, would be um, lettuce, spinach. Um, even peppers, peppers, you're cutting open the fruit, but it's dry on the inside. Right. Um, but so many kinds of like greens and broccoli, cabbage, carrots, onions, many, many uh, of those plants will put up a seed stalk. So, um, and that's, that's part of the dry seeds. They, so after the maturity of the vegetable itself, like for example, lettuce, right? You've got your lettuce head, then it will shoot up a seed stalk 
And then, um, then comes the flowering stage. So first you'll see flowers. Um, and again, it takes different forms on different kinds of plants, but generally speaking, you wanna look for a seed stalk, then the flowering stage, then the flowers kind of wilt away, and then the seeds are starting to form. All and right. then you know they're, they're ready for harvest when um, they'll be completely dry and brown and brittle. So they'll All like right. completely break off in your hand. So that's, um, those are the major two categories. And then, yeah, the wet seeds, it's, a, it's another process, but basically you're taking the fruit itself um, and then getting the seeds from the fruit. And the funny thing is, um, we don't associate a lot of things where we should. You get beans, they start sprouting, mm. like the beans are ruined. Well, the funny thing is the bean is actually the seed. Yes. So mm, when wow. the bean starts sprouting, that means it's, it's trying to grow, we'll start growing some more beans. So that's the funniest right. thing. I don't even think about these type of things a lot of times. Also, yep. very wow. important as far as um, seeds are concerned. If you have like seedless grapes, seedless anything, that's an obvious GMO. God made everything to reproduce right. itself, Save and it. itself plentifully. Right. Hence, Save life, it. life more abundantly. So if you got seedless grapes, you got seedless this, seedless that, you are going off of some seedless thought. Seedless right. means not conscious. You ain't put that thought there. It's, that's something that someone else put there. We got to find a way to, you know, put a seed in it because when it's a seed, it can reproduce itself. That's right. Yeah, so, um, and I'm so glad you, you brought that up. So beans and peas are two things. You have some there? And we, yes, I have some in my head here. Can you show them? <laughs> um, are two things that, that uh, the, the food itself is also the seed itself. So right. those navy beans, literally our first year, we just, we had our uh, organic navy beans that we got from the store and we planted these, right? And they grew bean uh -huh. plants. Um, and then for the peas, so we, you know, we don't eat the, um, the, the sweet peas, right? The field peas. But um, if you have like sugar snap peas, snow peas, any of those green garden peas, you would just let the pod go all the way and get brown, like I said. Um, and then take the beans out, uh, I mean the peas, sorry, take the peas out of the pod and that's your seed. So you would plant these dried peas directly and that'll, that'll uh, produce another garden pea. So when we talk about the seeds and where they actually come from, now this really means that a lot of times when we're eating food, we don't realize that we actually have that first part of life with us. So assuming someone's eating organic, right? And they're eating something that you would want to reproduce. How should a person go about, because it said in your bio um, that you are into seed saving. So say I did, like, like say I've been eating organic. So we have a lot of people here that might have been eating organic, but didn't really know the truth about the seeds and, and how they harvest them. How does someone go about, maybe they got some um, cucumbers from a local farm and they're organic. How do you harvest it now? the seed from the cucumber is there a certain process to that this cucumber or the tomato or whatever is there a general process yes so so um seed saving is actually a much much larger topic and um be, mostly mm -hmm. because there's so much you know gmo seed and um something called f1 hybrids which is it's not right. gmo but it is like selectively breeded by by farmers and it's not heirloom so right. anything that is F1, so basically what I'm saying is it matters on the variety. So if you were to get, you know, fresh produce from your farmer and you want to, you know, save that cucumber seed, the first thing you need to know is the variety. So you could ask the farmer or um, that's, I mean, the, that's the biggest benefit to growing something yourself. That way you definitely know the variety. It, right. it is hard when you get it, you know, from a farmer unless they know the variety and they can tell you. Um, because there's, there's like hundreds of varieties of cucumbers, you know what I mean? So and just who knows which one you have and if it's an F1 hybrid, right? If it's an F1 hybrid, you, you save the seed, you plant it, it may or not, may or may not produce like cucumbers that you want to eat because the, the, the traits with, with the genetics of the seed will like separate out in future generation. So you don't right. know if it's going to be tasty. You don't know if it's going to be weirdly shaped. You don't know if it's even going to survive you know, if it's like genetically viable. Um, right. so, so yeah, with, with some things you really don't have to worry, like lettuce, for example, and herbs are two things that like pretty much across the board, if you save the seed, you'll, you'll get lettuce, you'll get the, that same herb if you plant that again. But then it, it depends on the vegetable for, um, 
for yeah for other things too. True indeed. Just just basically <laughs> play too, like heirlooms. So if you have an heirloom in your family, that means you pass down this necklace, for example, or this uh -huh. hat passed down for my father's and my father's father. They passed down through the generations. So we have heirloom seeds. It's the exact same thing. They've passed down genetic properties that enable them to do certain things. For example, where we at it snows. You know what I mean? It gets cold up in here. So right. an heirloom plant that's that's native to this environment. That means mm. it's gonna have the genetic properties to withstand the cold, withstand mm -hmm. the snow. It's gonna exactly. it's gonna be contributed to weather conditions and potential you know infestations that would be native to this area. You know what I'm saying? F1 hybrid, it, the entire thing is it's short term. That just means that um, we're short term genetically you know creating this so to have maximum size, maximum color, or maximum flavor for yeah, this type right. of thing. And More pest resistance. yeah, selective so breeding. Yes, and then and then after that, F, after after F one goes away and F two comes in, we have no idea what's going to be. Right. All you know right. Saying? That makes sense. the second generation after that, we have no idea. It's essentially a mystery seed. Right. So right. we don't. It's not and, very reliable. And you know, the, there there's like there's reasons to plant you know F one hybrids because again, like um, they they will have a lot more like specific pest and disease resistance, right? So whereas maybe, um, you know, your heirlooms will be wiped out by a drought, maybe, maybe the F1s will, you know, will hang in there. But it's just good to know that you don't want to save that seed. That would be for, you know, getting a big harvest for this year, you know, which is still needed, right? We still need like food. Right. Um, and it doesn't mean like, it's not GMO. GMO is not something we want, but it's F1 hybrid doesn't mean it's like in any way inferior per se it's just you won't be able to save the seed or perhaps it it's a bit inferior in some ways but um if it's seed saving i mean it, it, it if if it survives you know a pest that wipes out everything else then hey i'll take that pepper you know what i mean so it's so there's there's room for both um and i just just um one more one more piece of advice um for people who want to get into seed saving which i highly recommend I just highly, highly recommend everybody highly. do it. It feels right. so empowering. It's so great. Is just hit, start with like one or two of your favorite favorite herbs or vegetables, something that you feel like is particularly drawn to, and start looking into okay, you know how how would I save the seed or what does that look like, um, or what are the you know what kind of varieties am I looking at to be able to save a seed? I, yeah, and and again, herbs are a lot. Um, a lot simpler and easier than other things but yeah i would just recommend picking one thing and looking into it and it's not it's not that hard you could do it <laughs> all right awesome now I, I, I see I, I took the class but i just learned a little bit more right there see fam this is value so to everybody who's just coming in and who has joined since the last time i said this thank you all for tapping in this is brother daniel casey one ncf um and we are here interviewing blessings divine and sarah rose of samad gardens initiative this is a power couple in the gardening and farming field they are urban farmers and they teach urban farming um to uh, the inner city and they not only teach it they teach how to do it whether you're on a farm whether you're in a community garden or if you want to farm indoors which is extremely valuable because everyone's situations and circumstances are not the same so this is an extremely valuable conversation that we're having and i'm really excited and i'm having fun already um, so share this out to a few people if you're interested, if, if you think that they'll be interested in it, because we want people who actually, you know, want to get into this because, again, the times that we're living in, we see the necessity for good food and there's no better way to assure that you're eating good food than to grow it yourself. So that, so you see the comment pinned at the bottom, www.samadgardensinitiative.com. Save that. Follow, um, um, visit that website and get tapped in. All right, so we talked a little bit about seeds. And, and just to that real quick, um, you know, cause I want to get into that now. I have some seeds that I've purchased um, via staple goods, but I want to get into actually, like you said, um, seed saving. And I actually have a question that I'm going to save for that for a little later at the end. Um, but, yeah, so you know I'm going to save that question. Let's get into the next part. So we talked about seeds, right? But once you got the seed, right, it has to go somewhere. It's not just going to, you know, you're going to sit on your table and get and get some fruit, right? You got to get it in the soil, right? So that's the next topic. This is seeds, soil, and light. So, so let's talk about the soil. Um, now, of course, seeds need minerals. They need nutrients. And that 
part of where they get it is from the sunlight. Part of where they get it is from watering. But a big part of that is the soil that you put them in. So just generally speaking, can you tell us a little bit, don't give us all the game, a little bit about the soil? Maybe, you know, what, um, what are the main properties in the soil that you're looking for regardless to the seed type? Um, and maybe what are some um, ways to differentiate between soil that you're going to use indoors versus soil you're going to use outdoors? Well, one thing I'll say right away is um, soil health is perhaps the most important aspect. Like um, soil health is perhaps the most important aspect of growing food because this, when when the plant has the correct soil, it can draw all of its own stuff it needs. It can help support itself. Like your body knows what to do. If your body is sick, you know, what I'm saying if you put your body in the right condition, it's going to be able to fix whatever the problem is. Whether it's a flu, whether it's you know this or that, a broken leg, it's going to heal itself. Plant does the exact same thing with the soil. So soil health is the most important thing because it can fix itself. Yeah. You know gotcha. Yeah, it, it's literally like a microscopic universe. The soil is mm. its own microscopic universe, right? So we see dirt, right? But there's like, there's hundreds. <laughs> there, there's, there's like thousands, probably millions of kinds of bacteria and fungi and like living organisms right. and, and then the mineral breakdown in the soil. Um, so that's just to give you an overall picture of like what you're looking at when you're talking about soil. And then just some of the biggest um, foundational concepts is actually um, anything you can do to increase the beneficial soil, soil biology mm -hmm. is going to be the best thing that you can do. So sure, what, yeah. what that means is like, you know how like we would take probiotics, right? Um, mm -hmm. as, as beneficial bacteria. So anything that you can add like some kind of probiotic for the soil so right. Uh, right. biology, right, is like raw milk, for example. Um, you can make amendments out of raw milk that still has the living organisms um, wow. and bacteria that, that will help, um, yeah, help bring more life to the soil and then help shuttle nutrients in and out of the plant. Mm -hmm. And just the garden will be that, that much more thriving. Um, and one other quick concept is um, outdoor growing versus indoor growing. So all of the biology, you, you want that outdoor environment and the full cycle that really knows what to do. Inside, it's a completely different environment, right? Like, right. You don't want, you know, bugs. You don't really want that in your house, right? So you, you actually want to go with sterile soil, sterile potting mix. Sterile really. um, probably means there's no live you know, active life forms messing with it. You can get compost that's, you know, sterile. It happens after. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much that. Oh, and one one other quick note um, for those who got the, the Nation um, Seed Gardening Pack. I did look up every one of those varieties in the pack and they're all, because brilliant people, right? They're all open pollinated varieties so you can save the seed for all of them. Like they, they know what they're doing, so. No surprise, but just, yeah. So if you were to plant all of those seeds, right? Um, and actually, whenever you plant seeds, you want to label it, right? You want to label it with a popsicle stick or a piece of tape or something. Yes. Um, but yes. so label the variety. That mistake's been made. <laughs> label the variety and know that you will be able to save that seed. Because again, not to, oh, not to sound prejudiced, but like at a certain point, all seeds and seedlings kind of look the same. All right, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm like, okay, you look like the broccoli and the cabbage and the, you know, them a whole little lamb numbers in my mouth, you know? Right. That's just, I don't know, it all look the same. So yeah. label, everything. label everything and the dates is very important. So you know what it is, what variety it is, and when you plant it, so you know what stage comes next. Right, now see, that I didn't know that. Um, so that's good information. So what you're saying, just to clarify, the, all the seeds that we got from the Save program, once, once we grow those, the seeds that come from those plants are good to save. Yes. So I don't never got to, um, unless I want to, you know, unless I get a, you know, maybe like a, a few acres, then I might want to buy some more seeds. But really, I could just do one harvest and then harvest the seeds from those to be able to grow. That's 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 actually beautiful. I didn't know that. And yeah. you call it that, you, you call it what kind of seeds? You call it? Um, yes. Open pollinated. Open pollinated. Open pollinated. Open pollinated. Open basically means heirlooms, but it speaks more to the genetics of the plant, typically. It's, the, it's genetically stable so that you can save the seed and it'll produce the exact same thing um, every year. And I, right. I see 
um, a sweat face emoji came up and I was talking about labeling. <laughs> so it's Lama Lexus and Shireen. I, I hope uh, I hope you know what you planted. <laughs> we'll be in contact. <laughs> yes, Ashe Lifestyle. Um, Assalamu alaikum, family. Thank you, everyone who's tapped in. Um, real quick, so um, Sister Trune, so Queen Trune, that's my wife. She has a question. Uh, anybody else, if you have any questions, what we could do is actually put the questions in a little question box at the bottom. That way we can actually display the question on the screen. So if the comments go, we don't have to keep finding it. But uh, y'all, y'all, if y'all don't mind, y'all can answer that question. Yes. Um, yeah, good question. So, um, so I actually learned over the, year that, over the years that composted um, animal manure is not necessarily the best thing because usually it has a lot of uh, like weed seeds in that. Um, but you want to use um, you want to use composted vegetable material that has been composted a, at least a year. So it takes at least a year. Um, you know, if, if you make a compost pile and you've got like leaves, and green matter, and you've got dirt and paint, you've got your kitchen scraps in in the correct balance. You know, uh, you're mixing it up. Then you're making you know this lush compost, right? Worms in there. Uh, but you want to let that um, like inoculate the whole pile for at least a year. So that's getting it to a more stable place rather than um, you would call it raw compost if it's like very fresh. Um, but yeah, so so something that's been composted over a year. Um, some some uh, town and city municipalities might have compost uh, that's been yeah that's been like. Uh, produced in a, in a plant and stuff and, and has been, you know, well, well produced and well cured over a year that uh, you might even be able to get for free or for cheap. We have a local business uh, called Blue Earth Compost here in Hartford, Connecticut, um, and they have compost available. That's that's their business. Um, so you can buy these huge, huge bags for, you know, for cheap. Or there's also the garden store. Usually um, mm. yeah, um, there's some organic compost um, that you can buy. Um, so yeah, various sources for that. So you said something I never um, really thought about, and, and it makes perfect sense. Like, oh yeah, duh, because um, when you think about the manure, these animals are grazing and they're eating mm -hmm. weeds and stuff like that. And so that makes sense that you know a lot of people would use that type of compost and manure. And maybe that's why they're dealing with so many weeds. I mean, there's other weeds that's going to come up as well. But when you use that kind of manure or fertilizer, I should say, then you're actually might be introducing weeds somewhere that wasn't there or weeds on top of the ones that are already there. So that makes sense. So it's best to go with something that is the organic. There's something that's like all from um, scrap fruits, vegetables, or whatever. Yep. Yeah, I, I never considered that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so don't forget, oh, we got Queen Venus in the building. Uh, thank you for tapping into Stamani. Uh, please, please, everybody, if you have any questions, put them in the question box below. So do you have anything else to say about soil or, sh or should we move on? Um, yeah, we can move on. All right. So seeds, yes. soil, and then light. So once you get that seed in the soil and, you know, you the Mother Nature is going to do her thing and she's going to drop some rain, right? We have to do a little bit of that on our own as well. Um, but that light that light is so key and, and it's an important part of this discussion because again we're growing indoors and outdoors so outdoors the natural sunlight is going to come up every single day right we can bet on that right but then indoors is another situation if you live in an area now i learned something in the class and i'm, I'm, I'm gonna say this part you know if you live in a, in an uh, apartment or a house you want to indoor growing you have to really understand you know, what part of your house is getting what kind of sunlight and for how many hours. And so, you know, the question was asked in the class of me, you know, well, which direction, you know, or, or where are you going to put as far as sunlight? And I'm like, well, the sun comes up in the east on this way where my windows are. And I will like, well, no, actually, you really want the south facing window. So you have to know these kind of things because in my mind, the sun comes up in the east. So that's where I want my plants to face. And so let's talk a little bit about light. You know, the benefits, of course, of, of sunlight over you know having your grow lights and, and then what is it that you're looking for when you're trying to grow indoors what types of light and all that kind of thing well sunlight is amazing um the thing is the process of electromagnetic radiation 
gives off more, much more than just heat and light. That's the process that some go, you know, it gives so many different vitamins and minerals. It, it's really just amazing. That's why you take it, you know, for a certain period of time, it actually boosts your immu your immune system. It, it it boosts the immune system of the food. It helps boost the health of the soil. You know what I'm saying? You know, within within reason, because it also it also cook you. you know but sunlight is right. <laughs> a very important aspect of it um yeah yeah so um so the question right is okay we know that plants need light but why why do they, mm. they need light so if you think about it the plants um the leaves are like like factory and the, sunlight, the catalyst they literally they produce sugars they produce all of the compounds that they need through their leaves by capturing sunlight so it's actually incredible <laughs> what you think so yeah so that's that's really why light is so important and you'll see your plants um one thing one way you know that your plants are not getting enough light especially as seasons, right is if they're growing really really tall right really tall stems but small mm -hmm. that means All they're right. like trying to find the light and they're not getting enough uh -huh. wow. so that actually makes for weaker seedlings because you're because you know think about a wind you know now now you you plant them outdoors or you wind or something it just knocks them right over they're weird, you know stems there so that's just one the sooner you can catch that if you see okay my my seedlings are looking call it they look leggy leggy like they're very you know <laughs> know that they're not getting enough light and so for indoor growers right one way um to solve that problem is a grow light so and i'll show you what this uh grow light will look like it's uv rays right because the sun gives uv rays so you're not just going to be able to have any kind of light or led light it's going to be that like purple red pink um yeah, that that pink light has right. this full spectrum. So you might have heard the phrase "full spectrum grow lights." That that yeah, it's not just white. The got, got the full spectrum, and and yeah, the plants will need full spectrum for sure. So um, yeah, so that's one example. Uh, here is another, another one right there. Yep, Joe D example. So I don't know if you can see. This one, I haven't taken it out of the box yet, but this is another common thing as well. Like you have tube um, tube lights and you could hang two or three of these over, um, over an area and have your plants right underneath. And you wanna have them at least, um, at least six inches away, right? From the light. Um, and this, you know, I got at my, you know, local store for $25 for this lamp. Um, so, so yeah, it's not, it's uh it's not too expensive and it makes all the difference you know what yes, i mean if you're able to grow inside and there's um there's like a wide range of, of qualities and you know strength um to to grow lights and that's a whole other topic but um but i but don't let that stop you like like get a grow light it'll be worth it um you know it's a one-time investment you can keep growing with that um and it's and it's absolutely so the minimum amount of light that you're going to need to grow even like most um, herbs and you know greens, um, spinach, lettuce, stuff of that nature would be like five to six hours of direct light. So right. if you're not getting that, then yeah, then you need to grow light. Um, light and especially if you get into like tomatoes or anything that produces fruits, you're gonna need a lot more light. Like this, like this right here. Uh, so direct Ooh, what light. What we got here? Oh, this is a. Elderberry. Yeah, elderberry. this is an elderberry. But from um, direct light, <laughs> okay. so this is a south facing window. Why yeah. the, the equator is that way? The sun strike, right. sunlight strikes the equator, which causes the earth to rotate the terrific speed of 100. Well, you know, no. um, but yeah, oh, so, you got science. Yeah, so yeah, the um, direct light would be like this plant right here when it's light is hitting it directly. Partial light or shaded light would it's be like, shadow. yeah, it would be here. But you can't. So really the sunlight's not getting like directly. Yeah, it's not. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, paint a picture. Yeah. So you get it. It's not directly in where the light would be shining, but it would still be, you know, getting some light from the sun. So it's not direct. So direct would be like this right here. So as long as the sun hits about like 10 a.m. Yeah. currently, and then leaves around like 4 p.m., that's right. when the sun stops hitting this. That's that's direct light. 
Right. So, and that's right. That's exactly the process. You want to see, you know, just check it out, observe it different times a day. We're like, okay, so, it's not AM. Is this, you know, portion, you know, uh, does it have direct sunlight on it? Okay. Does it have some direct sunlight at 10 and 11? And you know, when does that light leave? Is it leaving at three? Okay. So if it's 10 to three, then we got five hours. You know what I mean? So that, that's how you calculate that. So yeah. real quick, can y'all take us back, take us back, take us back. What are, can you name those plants? What are those kind of plants y'all have right there? Um, and also the fruits that I see there. I see different, look like different types of squash. Oh, different types of squash. Yes, sir. We got Yes, we grew this. Um, that's something so special about winter squash is like once you harvest it, you can, these are great storage crops, right? Because mm -hmm. so in late March, you harvest it in November, right? And they serve it. And they're good and we're gonna you know continue to enjoy them this is butternut that's kashaw squash the big green and white one yep this is kashaw squash um and then there's, there's so many different varieties this one's called the delicata squash it's super sweet um yeah so that's the squash here this is um <coughs> is an elderberry cutting so elderberry mm -hmm. actually grows really well if um if you happen to be able, you know, to find a uh, an elderberry bush or elderberry tree somewhere, uh, you could easily take a cutting and then reroot it. Um, and yeah, our vine survives through the winter, and it looks like it's going to make it. You can actually even grow elderberry in very large um, containers, which I think we might mm -hmm. do have here. Um, yeah. So that's an, an elderberry is, I don't know if um, some of you guys have heard of elderberry. It's like um, very, yes, medicinal. very medicinal. Yeah, immune enhancing sweet berries. Um, and it's native to, so we're in the Hartford, Connecticut area. It's native to, you know, the Northeast. Um, I believe it's native to the Northeast. At least it grows really well here. It's well adapted to this environment. And if you find it, get it. Because I'm birds and I'm squirrels. I'm going to be yes. on it. If you see that, <laughs> what you're doing, I don't care if you're talking to your mama. Mama, I got to go. Click. Yeah, yeah, I gotta, I gotta I harvest these. Minutes. Yeah. If I'm right. for the whole sunshine thing, the whole sunlight thing, mm -hmm. it's the exact same way for us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm. So, light offers purpose. Life, and, light and purpose are synonymous with one another. In the dark, there's no real place for you to grow to to reach. You know what I'm saying? But when there's a light, right. the plants always reach for the light. Put the light over there, the plant will actually move itself to go over here. They don't move right. to see what the light is. We are the exact same way. And that's a very very important thing to connect these different kinds of dots because you realize how similar you know certain things are for our psychology and how our mind works and how God created us and how he created everything else then you start to be able to relate to what better and do things better I see you guys want to spit yeah no I just also want to while we're doing a little tour I wanted to show them so we yes yes let me see we started I don't know if it's too dark can you guys see this they can see it yeah I can so see so this is another idea Ooh, of one. ways to make you know, farming and gardening more accessible. This is a plastic eggshell carton. We're mm. literally growing out of plastic e eggshell cartons. All the label. So what we, yeah, we just like, you got to poke holes at the bottom of them, um, but that works. And then these are little spinach seedlings that are sprouting out. And I can tell because it got the awesome. name on the side, dig. And yes. on the other side, it got the date. So I know exactly. Yes. I can't get the camera there, but it's, you know, it's 324. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. See, that's awesome. Now that's resourceful. Yeah, and it, and look, it's right by the window. Um, it's right by our south facing window, so that that's how we know it's getting enough light. And you can tell, right, because they're not these long stems. They're they're leaves that are branching right out at the base of the soil, so they they're nice and healthy. And to give you an image too, like this one right here, if I'm my finger, if I'm my point, here we go. This one right here, mm -hmm. it would be about like twice as long if it weren't getting enough sunlight. Yeah. They grow really rapidly, fast, desperate trying to find that that piece of sunlight right there. Yeah. Wow. So that right there, family, is what I mean. Like you think about that. You don't have to have the best equipment and tools. You don't have to have necessarily a lot of space. You don't have to have a garden per se. They're growing now. I love spinach. I could say I eat it all the time. Was actually taught by Arm Black Mama to eat it, but not to try to do too much with it as far as like, consuming it. But the thing is with farming, you don't have to eat it all. You can grow in abundance and give some to your neighbor. You can produce a surplus and go into uh, trade and commerce. But the reality is that they have it available. 
regardless of what they're going to do with it. And they they were able to do a recycle. They were able to use eggshell cartons, eggshell cartons, something that they already had there. Then, you know, they go to the store, they got the soil, and they grow in spinach. Now, real quick, um, so y'all have those and they're sprouting. How long do they have to um, last in those before they are now transplanted into a bigger container? Yeah, great, great question. Um, so, so um, the first thing is you 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 want to wait till they have two sets of what you call true leaves. And what true leaves mm -hmm. mean is um, what you just saw was called the seed leaf or the cotyledon. Right. So it's the seed leaf. It doesn't look anything like the the actual leaf of the of the spinach. I guess that that's just how it grows. Um, mm -hmm. So once it has its second set of true leaves, that's when we can um, transplant them. Um, so it should be like uh, like at seed. least an inch off of the um, inch or two, depending on you know what kind of plant it is, um, off of like the base of the soil. And the other thing, the way you know is um, if you try and kind of pull it up, just pull it by the base of of the seedling, the whole the whole soil block should just come all together, right? Because the roots right. will have found their way around everything and they'll be grasping all the soil. So it won't be like falling apart or like you're kind of yanking then the root is tearing. So it should come easily kind of all together. And, uh, that so makes sense. These, they grow sets like this. So they have one set here, then do this. They have another set beneath it, like beneath it, beneath it. Beneath it, like this? She's not doing it right. But I'm all, I'm all <laughs> so you'll have, you'll have, you'll have like the sets of leaves will be two at a time. So by the time it has has four leaves, yes, that's like you can tell. That's one of the all ways. Right. That's yeah, cool. I didn't know that. That's awesome. So so basically, once it's established an actual root ball, mm -hmm. so you can basically you can tell by tugging it. You can tell by how many true leaves are on it, and then that's how you know when to transplant it. Yeah. So, all right, that's awesome. So um, we have a question. Uh, I have one more thing about light um, that I want to ask, and then we'll go on to the question. So when we're thinking of when we're thinking about like a lot of plants, like my house plants, you buy different types of plants that you want just for decoration. And I used to work at Home Depot in the in the uh, I used to work for a company called Service Service Merchandises Dizers who work at Home Depot, and I would merchandise flowers. And so I know a little bit about you know um, partial sunlight and all that kind of thing. And that's the question because I don't know. Is it true that you know it's mostly flowers that have that variation, and then but most fruiting plants are are pretty much all full sunlight, or are there there are certain types of fruits that actually do like um, you know shade. Partial, partial shade. Yeah, there partial. are some prefer partial shade. Yeah, yeah, there are as as a general you know if you were to pick one, it's usually full sun, but yeah, there are some exceptions to that. Um, yeah, and and then and then there's there's some plants that will be tolerant of a certain amount of shade, like okay. like lettuce for example. Like it might not be quite as abundant as if it was in the full sun, but it will still grow. It will still grow a lettuce head. It will be tolerant of partial shade. And actually, mm -hmm. um, ginger is something. And I know, brother Dan, you you were interested in growing ginger. Mm -hmm. um, ginger. Ginger is something that grows really well in partial shade. Um, so that's a really interesting one. And it also grows really well in containers. So that's something that, you know, that grows really well indoors. If, if you put mm -hmm. it by the window um, and you've sprouted it, and, you know, there's a whole process to ginger. Because ginger is a rhizome, right? When, you, when you're um, eating the ginger root, that's also what you're planting. Like that's, that's right. you know, the plant. But then it shoots up these green stalks. <clears throat> um, but the ginger does really well in partial partial shade, so I like that for for folks um, that don't have any like land space. Ginger is something that that grows well in containers and with limited light. Also, to add on to that, with a plus degree, um, shade also has the other feature of not just blocking light but blocking heat. So mm -hmm. some plants, when it gets hot, they don't do hot as well. They like to be near something that can like cut off the heat a little bit, so they have a little bit of shade in that sense. So that's also another thing. Yeah, All right. So um, that's our question down at the bottom. Is it better to use earthworm in your soil instead of compost? I think I know the answer to that, but I'm going to let you all tackle that. I would say um, it's not an either or. Both are both are great. Indeed. Both both are great, and it's yeah, it's not an either or. Earthworms, 
if you see earthworms in your soil, you know you're doing something right. That is a good mm. sign. And you can always, yeah, you can introduce earthworms. That that's great. Um, and so so the worms will help to um, kind of help to recycle some of the nutrients in the soil. Um, but the compost will be will just add more nutrients to be cycled into the soil. So um, so they both work kind of together. Yeah, they do different things, definitely. And um, the, the worms are great. For those who don't know, earthworms are soldiers for life. Literally, from the cradle to the right. grave, they do work. They don't That's take right. no days off. They ain't asking for no patronage. They ain't got no, you know what I mean? They going to do what they do and helping your plant have aerated soil and have healthy, fluffy, light soil so they can move around better all the way to the day they drop dead. But they do do two different things. So the compost adds a lot of nutrients necessary, and the worm helps to organize and balance how everything is supposed to function down there. Right. And so real quick, because you just said um, something, and it kind of just goes back to the soil thing. Um, now we think about, a lot of people think about pests when they think about growing their plants, and they don't want no kind of bugs nothing near their plants. But not all bugs are bad, right? Not all um, what you would, I see, I, I put the term pest on the ones you don't want there, kind of like weeds. Mm -hmm. Some people consider things that aren't weeds, weeds, which in my mind just means a weed is an undesired plant. It's really based on the person you're asking. And it's the same thing for, for, for animals in um, the bugs. The pest is just the one you don't want there. Some people, I don't know, <laughs> I might like mosquitoes, right? So to them, it's not a pest. Me, mosquitoes pest. are pests. Are there any pests? <laughs> pests, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, sir. So, um, but you use the term aerate the soil. And that's very important. Like you said, if you see earthworms, then that means you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing with ants, you know, um, and I'm sure there's some ants that might eat plants. I don't know really the, the truth of that, but I'm sure there might be some ants that aren't good. But ants and worms are two creatures that as they tunnel through the earth, they're actually eating things in the earth that might not, be, that might be impure and will actually help. They're helping you to maintain your soil and the same thing with earthworms. And so when people are thinking about gardening, um, indoors or outdoors, um, are that is that something that they should consider in the beginning? Maybe getting um, some earthworms to infuse into their soil to help with the health health of it. I mean, they could. Yeah, I I would say a hundred percent definitely for outdoor growing. For indoor, I honestly still need to do a little uh, some of my research on that on on how. Um, how worms fare in an indoor environment, whether they invite, you know, other kinds of, of bugs or organisms. I would, I would think that they're still beneficial for indoor, but I would, I wouldn't take mm -hmm. that on. I would check that out a little bit more. <laughs> I think they'd be beneficial. We'll, we'll, we'll but yeah, find worm, out. Worms you know are I mean? fantastic. We'll find out. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. another thing about, a lot of things about the bugs and stuff is, uh, funny enough, certain kinds of bugs, fight the bad bugs that you don't mm -hmm. want That's right. certain types of bacteria mm -hmm. and microscopic organisms that we people blanket is bad a lot of them are actually beneficial the plant depends on them mm -hmm. bad things the sickness start coming in these these bacteria and these bugs and these so-called pests will go into action to help out yeah. your plant heal because out in the ecosystem as everything is how it's supposed to be they all realize if this thing's going down, that means there's gonna be a problem. We all gonna go down. Everything's Plants right. will send each other nutrients in yeah. the soil through their roots. Like, wow. hey, we got bees here. Um, she's sick. She got something. She got the Rona. Now she knows she don't. But she was <laughs> something wrong with her. We gonna send our health and our our extra stuff mm -hmm. over there to help her get better. Because if she gets sick, then we all gonna get mm -hmm. sick. It's kind of built into the very paradigm of life itself, except right. for what we're concerned. But we working on that. Yeah, the plant community. Yes, I like that. I like that. Their own little, um, you know, it's a community really because those roots are all intertwined underneath the earth, and you grow um, one vegetable next to another vegetable. Some of them roots are extremely long, and so they they're communicating with each other, and that's just a, a beautiful concept to have in your mind about that. Now, real quick, um, brother, blessings in your bio. It talked about. Um, the psychology and that you're into the psychology. So give us some psychology, the psychology that a person wants to have, or what is the psychology of a person who wants to get into gardening? Like where should they put their mind? You know what I mean? That's a, that's a beautiful question. I was hoping something like this would come up. Mm. Um, the first thing I always say is, I tell this to everybody, gardening and growing food is as simple as putting on your left shoe. If you put on your left shoe, 
then you can grow some food. Uh -huh. I say that it's humor astounding, but that's exactly what gets their attention. Because you're like, how can that be? Well, it's really simple. We break this down mathematically. You know what I'm saying? Your mind is the most valuable thing that you would ever, ever, ever have, ever invest in, ever develop. Period. Right. Nothing will ever equal what you can do. So right. the mindset of someone who wants to be productive, not just at farming, but at anything in life, you have to first start to develop your sense of self. Right. And you have to understand who you are and what you are. But not some shallow, it's not some shallow cliche. You know what I'm saying? It's not some shallow cliche. But we hear it in all the movies. When the when a good guy is getting the crap beat out of him and someone shouts, remember who you are, and suddenly he has the power to come become the bad guy, right? Well, let's look at who we are. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think so lowly is so much lesser of themselves. If I say I'm so great at this, I do this really well, a lot of people's first instinct is, well, I can't do that. I can never be able to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's here, this little subconscious voice come up in your head that's kind of keep you in that type of a place. That's the that right there is the enemy we're trying to fight. That right there. When you're in your own head, that's where all the work is. That's where enemy lines belong. You know what I'm saying? Well, salam, sister. Salam. Salam. And speak on the, the fear. I think a lot of people have right have this fear yeah. of, and, yeah, I don't know where to begin. I don't think I can do this. Speak right? on that. Yeah. This goes back to um, building this image. You know what I'm saying? Um, if you want to talk about um, fear, fear is the opposite of what? Faith. Mm -hmm. That's because right. Right. Thing, both faith and fear, they both demand your belief in something that you can't see. Why would someone choose fear over faith? One word, ignorance. That's right. the basis of it. What's the opposite of ignorance? Knowledge. Mm. You know so knowledge, what is knowledge? Knowledge means, okay, I know one plus one equals two. Do I know it because someone told me? No, I know it. That when you when you know something, that is an unshakable foundation. Right. I know it's 2021. You can say it's 2022. I'm not gonna come off what I know because I know it's 2021 right now. When you know something, you are absolutely sure of it. There is no shakiness. You know for an actual fact. That's what it is. That's right. That's, that's right. That's very, very, very important. So there's a difference between you know believing in something and knowing something. They say you're supposed, to, you're supposed to believe in God so you know who God is. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, and it's it's knowing that you were made for this. It's knowing that that you can do this and, and yeah, and that there's, yeah. And that knowledge goes, see, everything comes from that knowledge. When you, when you, when you have, because you have to, starting with knowing who you are, you are something, first of all, that is so valuable, right? You are something that is so valuable, so irreplaceable. You have so much power. That's the that's the thought that we have to start operating with, and that all comes from like, for example, confidence. where does confidence come from? Confidence comes from your evaluation of something. The more you evaluate something, the more you come to know it, the more you come to believe in it. That makes sense, mm -hmm. y'all. Yes, sir. That made beautiful sense. I'm glad she asked you to, to touch on that because that was that was that was awesome. Um, I like the way that you broke that down. Uh, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, right? Those are it's a cycle that you go through. It begins a belief, but you can't stay at belief. You have to, you know, take what you believe in, what you have faith in, and begin to know about it. And then when you start to apply what you know, you gain wisdom. And then applying that wisdom over time begets understanding. And so we have to go through that cycle. Like, like Mark says, it's the circle of life. And so real quick, as we wind this interview down, I have a, a few questions I want to ask. Um, and please, please, everyone is in here. Um, put your questions in the question box. If you have any questions for Brother Divine and Sister Sarah Rose, please put them in the question box so they can address them, right? So real quick, and you actually kind of answered a couple of the questions that I had already, so we're just going to skip past them. Um, first, top three benefits of growing your own food. It could be short, long, as it's up to you. Top oh, three benefits. And y'all can share the three or do your own three separate. It's up to you guys. Let's do all three. You, you go first so we can compete. Oh, all right. All right. Let's see. So I have three reasons to grow my own food. Um, one, security. Like literal mm -hmm. food security and, and yeah, food security and self-sufficiency, right, is, is like one. Two, the, um, the, your nutrition is the foundation for health. So just for my own health, you know what I mean, and for the health of those, you know, that I love two mm -hmm. and then three um three to to help reconnect me with what it feels like for me to be human that's what it is for me 
Now, quite but, literally, before you go move on from that, like quite literally, because you are what you eat. So the yeah. human being's physical being is literally comprised of the actual things that you put in your mouth. So if you want to get in touch with who you are, <laughs> what better way than your food? Yeah. That's right. That's right. And exactly. I, I just briefly want to say that um, that a, a couple years ago, I went through a pretty serious um, health challenge. Uh, I actually had Lyme disease, which is something <laughs> that, you know, it, it is very serious. And it just, it taught me how... Yeah important food really is and and you know i i was able to um to heal my heal myself through a combination of eating right right um and you know proper herbal supplements and homeopathy and you know and and various natural remedies but the eating right like i could when i ate something that was not good for my body i felt it because i was so i was ill so i right. would be physically sick for days and it just it just really taught me the value of when I, when you're eating clean when you're eating healthy you just feel so much better it's literally brings you to higher right. state of life definitely does you can feel the difference yeah absolutely so it's, it's quite literally what you said you are what you eat yeah um so if i had to come up with three i would say one for for mental clarity for mental health mm. mental health is so, so big mental health is so closely tied to your digestive system like it's wow. so closely tied to your digestive system. It has to do with the boost of autism, particularly in black and brown communities. It has to do with the boost of all these different things, ADHD, all these different things that we that we see on the rise. Diet has a huge right. piece to do with that. That's that's one. So being in control of my own my own mental health and being able to have mental clarity. Um two. Let me just uh two, the satisfaction of being able to, you know, produce. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? We we are developed to be productive. Produce mm -hmm. right. you know that's the most important things to be productive. And I would be able to love to be able to control my own destiny and be productive. Um three. Yeah, I didn't even think about this before I started spitting it. Hey, we haven't even talked about taste yet. Taste yeah, is the a food, huge reason. The food tastes better. <laughs> there we go. The food tastes better. That's my no, but, but that's important because it shows you because it's good that you didn't say taste. Why? Because most people, they relate when they think about what they want to eat. It's, what do I want to taste? Mm. Guilty. <laughs> I love and chocolate. And this is another layer of, like, have faith that actually, like, uh, physically how our, our bodies work, how our taste receptors work, is your taste will adjust to what you're yes. eating. So, so when you start, mm -hmm. even though, like, you know, the idea of eating, like, salads every day might be, like, no. If you start eating salad like fresh, you know, salads every day, you start to crave that, you start to love that, and you start to right. think like, oh, fried chicken, like no way, like I don't want that, or or like that's yeah. exactly how it works. You reinforce those brain cells in your brain. There's actual neuroscience behind the entire thing. You're actually reinforcing the strength of these brain cells that have this connection to this specific thing, and your taste buds will change. Let me tell you, I used to be addicted to sweets. I mean, addicted to sweets. I mean, addicted to the withdrawal symptoms were bad. Let yeah. me tell you. I, I don't even I like I don't eat sweets. She comes in with some ice cream, like, yo, I got some ice cream. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I don't eat ice cream no more. I don't have a cravings for it. Like, your taste buds will, will match what you practice. So practice is the, one of the most important things you can do in your life because you practice as you perform. That's not just doing sports. That's not just rapping. That's to do with every action you do, standing up straight. You know what I'm saying? Not reacting over emotionally. You mm -hmm. know, how to water plants appropriately. That's that number four. One, two, one, two, three. That's number four. That's culture freedom. Mm. Yeah. No, that's, 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 that's big. That's big. I like that. Did you say your third one? I'm sorry? Well, oh, yes. Yeah. I had a taste as your third one. Thanks, All right, yeah. cool. All right, cool. I love so much because everything we was talking about earlier, I can literally each word like faith. I can talk an hour on faith. I can talk an hour on confidence. I can talk an hour on knowledge. So these are all really big, beautiful, powerful concepts. But the whole thing is you have to know that you can do it. Mm -hmm. You can do it. And the more you practice doing it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? The easier it'll become. The more, you, take the more steps, you will experience the benefit of what you're mm -hmm. doing, like every step along the way. And the more you practice doing it, not only the easier it will become, but the more that voice that tells you you can't, the more that's going to be quiet and go away. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, there'll be a voice that's kicking up. So when you start having conscious doubt, your subconscious confidence will kick in and be like, no, 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 we do this now. That makes sense? So at first, you your conscious mind, you're like, I can do this. And your paradigm's like, no, we can't. But there comes a point where you fix your paradigms. Your paradigm says we can. 
So at any point, something your mind says, I can't do this, your your paradigm, your subconscious mind is going to check you. Like, yo, we meant for this is what we do, son. What up? And especially as you see the proof of yourself doing it, you won't be able to convince yourself that I can't do this. <laughs> mind of a matter. That's, that's, right. that's literal. That's literal. Right. So um, now for the, the last question, because I want to give you all time to talk about um, your course, uh, your training. So... How has farming changed your life? Now, when I say that, I mean from before you actually stepped on a farm and then now you've been farming for a little while, what change have you seen? Um, even outside of just the, you know, the, the health benefit, like what change have you seen? Like how has it helped your life? How has it changed your life? Wow. So it, it, it has really, that's a great question. It really has been a lifestyle change and an extremely empowering lifestyle change, right? Because it's, it's, it's made me change from a consumer and especially as Americans, right? We are, we're taught to be consumers. Like anything that we could want, we could, we could order on Amazon. We can pick up at the grocery store. We don't, have, you know, we, we, we are in the system we're placed as consumers right but growing from a consumer to being a producer to produce my own food to like dry my own herbs and jar them and you know food preservation and um hit up sister Colette for that um it's just yeah transitioned me into a producer and it's it's been so empowering um to feel like i can trust myself i can rely on myself to suffice you know some of my own needs um and and it's just changed my my day you know my activities in my day right i'm doing something that i'm actively benefiting from rather than rather than consuming something it's gonna be gone after after i'm through with it you know what i mean or or you know producing waste i'm like i'm actively contributing to you know some something i'm gonna benefit from and something my community is gonna benefit from right because right. um as soon as we started gardening, right, we're, we're, we're consuming some of our produce, but we're selling it at the community farmer's market. We're connecting with people. We're in it. The, the feeling of being able to give someone something that you grew and you know, right. it's clean and you know, it's going to improve their health and it's going to be good for them. And uh, it just, it just is such a great feeling. Um, and so, feel yeah, me. my, yeah, the activities in my day are just, are more productive and not just consuming. Right, I like that. So it's more for food. All praise is due to Allah. Absolutely. True indeed. She came to me and was like, one of my goals is to to produce all the all the food that we eat during the winter. Like she told me that like like last year or something like that. I'm like, that's <laughs> yeah. a weird thing to want, but okay. But like no, no, I'm with it then. That's the best thing to want, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. That's part of the mindset change, you know what I'm saying? She said we uh she says it's a lifestyle change because everything's a style. And guess just, what? We still have squash, and it's March. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know what I'm but everything's a style. So lifestyle yeah. is two words. You got life. Life, what is life? Life mm -hmm. is growth. Life is opportunity to keep going towards eventual perfection. And style means habits. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the fourth culture. You know, culture nice freedom. Habit. So when your habits allow you to be free, you have a culture that enables you to be free. Mm -hmm. So when you have a lifestyle, that means you, your your whole culture is geared towards your growth, your elevation. Mm -hmm. Now, most people, in fact, have a death style. That's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. right. And, and one, last, one last part of the lifestyle change, right, is so the other, the other thing we haven't even talked about is, you know, when you're a consumer, you're constantly shelling out money, right, for, right. for something in return. And now you're saving money. And you, you know, if, if you have the abundance in the mindset that you want to make a, a business out of it, you can actually sell your access to your neighbors or to the community, right? And, and make a stream of income from it. So it's like you're saving money and you're producing something of inherent value to every human being who eats food, right? That, um, you know, that, that is incredibly valuable. So, so it's like, yeah, so, so our fences right have gone down and uh, mm -hmm. and that's another that's another big plus yeah during the summer it's like this door yeah so it's really like it's, it's an exponential growth of wealth because you're getting good wholesome food you're getting health there's a monetary gain because now you can actually enter into trade and commerce but you're also saving money on the other end so right. and then you also like I said developing relationships um yeah. there's so much to gain from gardening and farming that really 
it's, 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 it's a wonder why it was the first profession. Everything comes from it. It is the most productive field that you can go into. Now, this is, this is the reality. Yeah. Most fields or industries aren't fit for everyone to be in them. Farming is really one that everyone on the planet could do, and you still wouldn't have enough. <laughs> you, you, can, you can't overwhelm it. And so, because everyone could grow their own, everyone doesn't have to grow the same thing. If I'm growing tomatoes, eggplant, and, and peas, well, that's me. The now I said, Well, I'm a farmer too. What is, okay, but you're growing three other things that are not growing, so we can still trade with one another and still be in the same market. So, you know, I can only wear one pair of shoes at the same time. So, that's right, exactly. So and and group e economics now we're circulating our money in our community and meet, getting all of our needs met. It's, it's yeah, that's and beyond right. that, too, there's, there's so much more than just growing the food because you know, what I mean, you can actually create soil and. To, to be someone who specializes just in soil creation to create the best soil, you know, I mean, that's a whole trade and whole skill right there you can do in. You don't have to grow everything. Or you can specialize in this and that. There's so many different practices and professions built within it, just on a scientific level. That's one of the most amazing things to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So right. it's beyond food. There's also the, the medicinal application of it. We also, mm. you know, we also do salves and stuff like that. If you have this or that, then we mm -hmm. can tell you, hey, go get this weed. And here's what you do with it, and you'll fix that. It'll be yeah. gone right away. Like, we can do that. That's the yeah, bug bites things. and right. Yeah, bug bites, stings, rashes, all of that stuff. There's like natural plant botanicals that take care exactly. of that, and it's stuff that you can grow in your garden, easily make into yeah something that you can use. And it you know, and immediately it's a hundred times better than anything you're gonna buy at the at the pharmacy. That's right. That's not exactly. That's exactly. Not cool. Goals, because it's like it's not just growing food. Like you want to grow some foods, so you want to have some security. But like, really think about what you want to do with your life. There's probably some answer to it in the garden. Right. Doesn't mean you have to spend your entire time. Like I said, I, I love being an MC. That's that's where I can get like lessons off and really start sparking people's minds. You know what I'm saying? But this, I don't put this over. Um, I don't put MC in over this whole gardening thing because there's so many different aspects of it. You know, what I'm saying yeah. that can water what you do with your life. And right. it's just Every individual has, you know, different affinities for different plants, and it's interesting just to be able to ask yourself the question. You know, like. Well, one, what do I love to eat? What would I love to have in abundance, right? And then go from there. Or what, or just, or herb, or if it's anything else, you can really, you have so much freedom to choose and, and to go with what you love, what you feel an affinity for. Like, I feel like I really like, you know, oregano. I use oregano all the time. I'm going to grow some oregano. You know what I mean? And right. Right. And so now... Again, welcome, 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 and thank you, everybody, that tapped in, right? We have the pinned comment at the bottom, www.samadgardensinitiative.com. Save that link. Follow the link. Also, visit our, our brother and our sister's IG page, like it, and share it. Now, um, we're coming to the end of this thing, so I'm going to ask everybody this year to, once this is, this is going to be posted, um, share it. Comment what you thought about this live. What value did you get from it? What benefit did you get from it? And then also, I want you to like it. I want you to comment on it and then share it. Share it in the DMs, you know, repost it so that other people can benefit from the great knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we got from our brother and sister. Now, I want to give them the opportunity to close this thing out, letting us know what it is they have um, available for us, what's coming up, what's um, in the works. Yes. So we have started our... Um, our weekly Start Your Own Garden crash course. Um, so formerly it was called Garden Planning, but really it's it's so much more than garden planning. So it's really yes. more appropriately named Start, you know, Starting Your Garden Crash Course. So it's about about a two hour course. Um, we're doing it every Sunday at 3 p.m. Um, and basically our, the goal of the course is to cover all of the major foundations to starting your garden uh, for new gardeners, um, or for folks who just kind of want a refresher or want a little more direction. Um, and so we, so we give a pretty thorough presentation of just this, breaking it down to the simple foundations and then going in a little bit um, into depth based on what your goals are, uh, what you want to be growing, whether you have an indoor or outdoor setup, whether you, you know, have potential for raised beds or whether you want to convert part of your lawn or, you know, so, some other space mm -hmm. into 
into um, a garden. So the idea is, you know, we have a certain amount of information, but then it's really adaptable um, to be applied to your specific situation. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've got stuff about container growing, you know, container gardening indoors. We've got stuff about outdoor gardening, um, raised bed gardening, and then it, it's really going to be dialed into what specifically you want to grow, or what your goals are for the season, and we can help you fine tune that as well if uh, if you're a little unclear. Um, but yeah, so that that's so it's about two hours, and it's Sunday at three p.m. And we also got mindset building. It's yep. based directly on who is in there. I didn't have to. I don't know if y'all know Brother Daniel. He's very, he's very unconfident. You can tell by his <laughs> unconfident smile. Yeah, lot of work with him to get. To the best. That's a lie. If you. <laughs> I, I do a lot. I, it's called deadpan humor, not dry humor. Okay, I tell sure, everybody. Sorry. But you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. but, um, I do do specific exercises with depending on who's in the room. I didn't have to do a lot with Brother Daniel because he is he's already on his job. Yeah, that is a shiny. I'm starving. I was part of my brother. Yeah, I was just kidding. I was mad and killing it. You know what I'm saying? So there's Crazy. a lot. Of, there's yes. God. There's a lot to do with the uh, the mindset, also resourcefulness. We help break you out of. Well, this looks like this. I say no. This could look like this. We can repurpose like this. anything. We can make right. it. Anything. And if you want the budget, we'll grow out of you know eggshell cartons. We'll definitely make yes. it happen. And and the big thing is a lot of people have fear. You know, fear and uncertainty around gardening. I don't know where to begin. I don't think I can do it. So we will talk through that and make sure that, that you know, you're you ready to go. You will have that resolved. Yep. And like I said, it's not always the racing to the swift. It's to the resourceful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I like the, that. Out think your circumstances, the more they bow down to you. And that's, that's, that's what I did. And Absolutely. we, so as you're offering more shops like this, we will be here a membership because the idea is to have like ongoing support for gardeners right because it's one thing to get get all this information all at once but there's there's so much there's so much to know and there's so much to learn from each other as a group and you know we certainly are not the only teachers the plants are our teachers you guys are our teachers um so we definitely want to hold intentional space with you know being able to answer the questions and, and getting all of the yeah, getting all the questions answered in a space so that's coming but uh, for now our start your garden crash course sundays at 3 p.m so tell them how much is the course uh the course is only 20 dollars right now which is a steal because we're just yes. starting, we want to make sure we're over delivering and um yeah and and and, and fine-tuning everything but it's 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 a it's a packed packed with information seminar so and humor uh, listen um I just took the course, family, and that's why, you know, so I remember when I first heard um, them talk about what they wanted to do was in a tribe call, you know, that's a group that we're all a part of, and I think I hit you all in the chat that same day, you know, encouraging it, because I'm like, wow, I like what they're doing and stuff, and so I already knew I was going to tap in, because it's, it's in my lane, right? I love the earth, I love the garden, I love, you know, and I don't have that much experience with gardening and farming, per se, I have experience landscaping and just dealing with the earth. And so I've always known I wanted to get into it, and then that was the eventual goal. And so I took the course, and I'm telling you, <laughs> family, you can't beat that. Now, I'm going to tell you something. They're not going to be able to keep that at that price. There's just no way they can do that. So I'm to tap in. Like I said, every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, no excuses, Eastern Standard Time, tap in. But make sure you go to that website tonight and secure your space, because I'm telling you, the space is going to be limited. Get in it and get in it now. And also, where you know, when you talk about growing food, there are seasons for this thing. And so it's getting warm outside. So certain windows have already been missed for planting certain things. So you want to get involved sooner than later so that you can um, get your crops in the ground um, in the appropriate season and, and, and get the yield that you want in the proper amount of time. Uh, and so thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. Um, blessings divine and sister Sarah Rose. I appreciate you all coming and doing this live. Um, I know that everyone that tapped in and everyone that will tap into the replay has gotten and will get a tremendous amount of value uh, from the game that you all dropped. This is it's, it's beautiful. I'm telling you, Femme, it's beautiful. And so uh, I didn't see any more questions. So we're going to end this live. And, uh, and um, again, everybody, make sure you visit their um, website www.samadgardensinitiative 
Now the, you won't be able to see the pin in the um, in the replay. It will be in the comments, but I'm gonna go ahead and spell it out. It's, it's Samad Gardens Initiative. S A M A D G A R D E N S I N I T I A T I V E dot com. <laughs> and just real quick, there's a question. Um, are we going to do an ebook? Yes, we have a couple in the works right now. Okay, yes. And we just wanted to shout out um, our sister, uh, Lucy LeBron, who has been a Patreon supporter of ours you know, since early last year. So she's been an early supporter. Just wanted to shout her out. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate Thank you, you so, so much. And yeah, a lot, lot more to come this year. Yeah. So, so real quick, no, because uh, yeah, when we talk about, you know, what you're doing, so also let them know your other social media. So they have a Patreon. You can go and, and support them through their Patreon. What else? Yep. Yep. Yes. Patreon.com slash Semi Gardens Initiative. We're, we're the most active on Instagram for sure. Yeah. So yeah, we do, we do weekly lives um, Fridays at 12 p.m. We're always doing weekly lives. Uh -huh. um, yeah, yep. Easter is standard time. Yep. There and you go. Yeah, make that tap into those lives. That's right. And we've got a lot uh, on IGTV. We've got a lot of information just um, Facebook, in our, in our YouTube. Yeah, yeah, YouTube and Facebook as well. <laughs> Same name, same name, family. Everything's the same name. Just uh, just uh, real quick, too. Samad is actually one of the names mm. of God. Means he upon whom all depend. Mm. Exactly. Depend yeah. you know I'm saying and we're trying to get some self sustainability right. out here. Mm. We're trying to depend on ourselves. We're trying to build the alternative to the mainstream that does not favor people like us. You know what I'm saying? We are literally building the hereafter. That's the mindset I have. And that's the mind I want to have if y'all want to be serious about this. We are building the hereafter. We are building that alternative. So our babies can have a clean source of food without all the problems that come with it. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. And what a beautiful way to close out. Thank you. Thank you again, family, for tapping in. This was a beautiful interview with Samad Gardens Initiative, Sarah Rose, and Blessings Divine. This is Daniel Casey, one NCF, tapping out. Until the next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Alaykum.